Yeah, hi. Um, we're talking yesterday, we did have a um, training on using the auxiliary load on the inverter. Unfortunately, I'm really sorry, it didn't go as planned. Uh, we had a few setup problems with our equipment, our rec video recording equipment, not the inverter. Uh, and it was a bit of a disaster. So I thought I'd redo it again today. Uh, we put something on YouTube. You know, the auxiliary load, uh, the auxiliary port is an amazing port and on our inverter. It's, it's something that can do everything. You know, we discussed yesterday about using it as a generator input. Today, we want to use it as um, a, a, an auxiliary load. In other words, you can use it for two different functions as, as well as a generator. One function, if the voltage of the battery or the state of charge of the battery is over a certain percentage, it can give you an output. Um, it can be used for two reasons. One reason, you can use it to, for example, if it's a sunshine day, the batteries are fully charged, everything is all good, and what's to do with the power? So you can switch it to your hot water geyser, maybe maybe an air conditioner, maybe whatever. So you can use the power for something other than waste it. And of course, you can use the auxiliary load as a reverse. You can use it as your non-essential load. Um, for example, if you're running fully off-grid, you may choose your auxiliaries to be non-essentials. So if the battery is, say for example, over 50%, then the non-essentials will work. Um, and if the battery drops below 50%, that's just an arbitrary figure, then the non-essentials switch off, but you still got your essentials. You've still got your lighting, your security systems, and whatever. So you, you can separate it, and that's a really, really nice feature of it, especially off-grid solution. On-grid solution, then obviously you're gonna use it for your hot water and stuff like that. So there's two different things. I wanna show you also, we're discussing using microinverter with the auxiliary load because that's always causes a little bit of confusion. So we set something up in the other room. So just let's go through and uh, we we can have a look. Inverter, we've got a load which is on, which is at this load is actually connected this is to the UPS, which is the load terminal. Uh, we've got a small on-grid inverter. Um, so we've got we've got three parts, and of course we've got a battery. So load load is running. So let's have a look at what's going on here on the screen. Okay, so we look on the screen. Let's go on to the setup. We we'll go on to auxiliary setup. So I can use now use auxiliary as for microinverter. So I'm going to click it for microinverter. Okay, so it's microinverter. Here you've got several things going on. You've got the point at which the uh, microinverter will switch on. So we'll put it on here and we might choose the microinverter to come on at say quite low, say 80%. So um, when the battery drops to 80%, the microinverter will come on. And let's go back on. And then if it goes to 100%, it will drop out. We've also got here this frequency. There is, um, everybody asks me about frequency shift. Okay, if the inverter is on grid, Working on grid, of course, we can't do a frequency shift because it ties with the grid, it can't separate. However, we've got a nice little feature which I keep avoiding, but it will work if we are using the system off grid and only when it's off grid, then the inverter can frequency shift to tail off a microinverter or a, 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 a slave inverter. So, here the frequency I've set it 52. This is the frequency of which the whole inverter frequency will come up to 52 and it can only do this when it's off grid and as it reaches 52 then it will tail off a microinverter and it will stop it running and it will adjust its frequency so it will frequency shift to drop it but it will only do that when it's in the off grid mode. Other, if it is on grid, so if you, so you've got zero export, if it is an on grid coupled, so if you're coupling it on grid then that function will not fun will not work because as I tried to explain before, the grid connection, the auxiliary connection, um, and the uh, load are in essentially all on a common buzz bar, which is controlled by relay. So they're all on a common buzz bar. So in this particular function here, you see the, the, the microinverter. And what the microinverter will actually do, the microinverter will supply the load. The inverter can only do one or two things. It can either charge your battery or discharge your battery it can't do both so you can't have the microinverter some of the power of the microinverter charging the battery some of it's supplying the load and the inverter supplying the load because the inverter has to reverse so that's very important to remember that 
but it's a nice feature. You've got micro inverter, sun is shining, it can give you more power to your load or whatever. It reduces the use of the battery in your solar panels, maybe just charging your battery. So you, you, you've, got, you've got two different things going on. And in fact, what you, what you, you can actually see here now, this is connected and you'll see this the micro inverter here is actually operating um, and it's, it's functioning here. Um, the noise you hear in the background is actually the our solar emulator. So we've got a solar emulator which is operating here. Um, so so this, you should see how it operates. It's very, very nice. Now, if we go onto auxiliary, now I've, I've obviously connected this to a microinverter, and I, I'll click onto here, and the microinverter will actually shut off. And I go onto auxiliary load, click OK. You hear the click; it drops out. That's because it's going to function as a different function. So I've taken off the, I've taken it off as a microinverter. Um, let's go back on here, auxiliary load. There are several things going on here. This is the point at which the auxiliary will go off. This is when it will come on. So this is currently set it'll as 100%. So the auxiliary load will come on at 100% and it will go off at 95%. Uh, I can ch these figures are totally changeable and I can, cha I can change these whatever I suit. This might, so my off position may be bring it much lower than what I was trying to explain before. So I might want my auxiliary to switch off if especially if I'm using it as uh, so on here now I can use that as non-essential loads so a 50% non-essential loads to switch off this figure here is the amount of power available on that port it also limits the power the power comes from the battery not the solar panel so the battery is in the middle so it will supply it so if you get a shadow coming across it will shadow another nice little feature here if I click here if I've got grid presence then it will always operate so if the grid is there, it will always operate. So I can connect my non-essentials to the auxiliary port. Grid's there, work hunky-dory. If suddenly the grid goes, the non-essentials could still work up until the battery reaches, say, 50%, and then the non-essentials will go. So it's quite a nice feature. Just be careful don't overload things, but it's a very nice feature, especially if you've got off and on power, and you might want to keep some of your non-essentials um, it, providing your batteries are all good so you've got that choice so it's a very it's a very nice feature so, so something to remember you can run non-essentials off your auxiliary uh, of course you can only do one thing with it so if you're going to use a generator or whatever you, and i explained this in a previous video about using a generator so it is a nice feature it's a very nice feature what we'll do we'll try and get some sort of document or manual just relating to auxiliary um so this is i think this is quite important um depending on how you use it. The other thing is remember, the power coming from the auxiliary port will not always show on the inverter because the CT coil. So when you look at the, when you look at the mapping of the unit, um, and I, I come out of it, so you look, at, you look on the mapping here and you see the auxiliary, Some, you, you'll see the power going out of it, correct with crazy environment, but sometimes when you're running for a generator, especially on a generator port, you can't measure the power of the generator because it's going straight to the common buzz bar and back out again. So what we do on our system is measure the time it's running, especially on a generator, that, that shows on the bar chart as well. I hope this is useful. Um, we will put more questions answered. If you've got any questions, just text on the group or whatever, we'll try and answer it. But uh, I apologize for yesterday, the training video didn't go down very well, so uh, should be better, but it's a great feature especially off grid you, you know and, and i always thought about this you know especially when we're using on very remote locations because energy is important you don't want to use all your energy on suddenly be in the dark uh if you're running off grid and having this feature is very very nice all right thanks for watching us and I'll keep in touch cheers